We're speaking today about the question, is the universe a love story? And uh, we're saying the answer to that is yes, but let's back up a little and see how we got there. First of all, I think everybody realizes there's a, a major shift in humanity going on. You know, we were almost three million years hunting and gathering and succeeded or we wouldn't be here. But then with the in invention of agriculture and the domestication of animals about 10,000 years ago, we made a major shift and out of the ending of that came a renaissance and the birth of science and then the birth of industry, mass manufacturing, and mass communication worldwide electronically, which we're involved in now. But what does that say about where we're headed? If you look at it in terms of human life, our infancy and childhood was hunting and gathering and all those millions of years. Our adolescence began with the birth of science and uh, in a, dem a democratic uh, situation where it wasn't just the private property of wise people, but it belonged to everyone who could learn to read and write. Uh, so now the question is, can we get out of arrogant adolescence, which almost all the wise elders of all the indigenous cultures and many, many others in the, in the uh, civilized world would say that we are trying, struggling to get out of adolescence into compassionate parenthood. Now, one of the things that's fascinating along the way is that humanity always has a cosmological understanding of how the universe works. And I think we've discovered that from what we can, we can find in the past, that during our infancy and childhood as a species, we believed in the mystery of the mother and the mother God and the, the ability of the woman to bring life into the world. And that was the political economy, the philosophy, if you would call it, of uh, those that era. When we came into the uh, change in the culture, into agriculture and the domestication of animals and then city-states and empires and so forth. That became a masculine operation. The women were uh, subjugated and uh, that has left us in this arrogant bellicose state that we're in. Uh, and uh, so the question is, can we get out of this and what have we got going for us? Well, there is now some study going on in physics and other areas about uh, an entire underpinning of light and electricity uh, called orgone energy by some of the founders, but now called um, zero point energy. And Einstein has said he believes that zero point energy, which has the entire universe bonded together in such a way that there, that there is no travel time it takes eight minutes for the, for the light of the sun to get to Earth, but in this underlying cosmology, there is no travel time. Everything is a single unity, and therefore there is no locality. We are everywhere and anywhere all at the same time. That being the case, what do we then come to? Well, we come to the subject and the, and the story of love, and wh where does it come from? and what is its place in the human story of evolution. And one in particular experience I've had that was just amazing to me was I put on a conference in Florence in Italy in 1978 and then again in 87. And in 87 I came to Assisi twice. And the second time I arrived in front of the cathedral in Assisi I had a migraine headache and I headed for a, a little hotel right nearby and rented a room and pulled down all the shades about three o'clock in the afternoon and put my sketch pad beside my bed and went to bed hoping to get rid of the, the, the uh, headache. I awoke four hours later and, they, and I felt like a, a new person. And written in my hand in the, in the pad beside me was the following statement because I had prayed to St. Francis before I went to sleep. 
And here was the answer written in the pad. Love is infinite in experience and meaning. How could it not be? It is the source, the substance, and the future of all being. So if you would build anything, build it on a web of love, and it will be both ephemeral and timeless, momentary and enduring. And the beauty of that very succinct statement of where the universe came from, what it's made of, and where we're headed, the source, the substance, and the future of all being uh, couldn't have been a better gift from St. Francis to me and now to you, to all of us. Later on and in quite recent time, I have prayed to Jesus Christ and asked him what I should know, and he even compacted more uh, than St. Francis. He said, love is all there is, all there is meaning that the entire universe and its whole history is made of love, by love, and for love. And so how do we go about asking the questions that help us as individuals and as groups, families perhaps, of where do we begin to ask the question, is the universe truly a love story, as St. Francis has said, as Jesus has said, and many others that uh, I have asked that question to. How do we begin? It's generally agreed nowadays that where, where our universe came from is a critically important question. And, and the theory that's held by most leading cosmologists, scientists, is that it started with what's called the Big Bang. This a tremendously huge explosion of heat and energy that, uh, and, and then light and, uh, you know, uh, there are different ways to tell the story. But the question always seems to arise, well, where did that explosion come from? And what I'm positing is this. Since we already know in current physics and, and consciousness that there is a field effect without, throughout the whole universe, where there is no locality, everything is everything else all at the same time. And, and Einstein has called that, he says, rather than call it zero point energy, he prefers to call it love. Well, if such a field is the birthplace of universes, you can imagine the wisdom and the, and the glory and the uh, profound generosity and, and, and uh, love that, that must have imploded its integrity to a point and then exploded it. So you had to slow down something that was beyond light speed and it had to come together and, and descend into an explosion which then birthed light. And then light should have gone out because it was perfectly symmetrical, supposedly, but it didn't. There was a little leftover light, and from that, matter started to uh, accrete and accrue and, and gather. And uh, so I'm saying that the universe is a love story because love is what imploded and exploded to cause the physical universe to emerge. And that at some point, consciousness, awareness, and then consciousness and human consciousness awakens to the beginning of that story. And then it asks itself, well, where are we going? What's the whole point of this? What is humanity's purpose in this story? And the answer is to return love to that from which it came. Now, some people would call this God. Some people would call it uh, different names. But I, I think the beauty of talking about love is it doesn't catch you up in any particular religion and it doesn't catch you up in any particular science, but it is something that is so profoundly necessary and wonderful in people's lives. It's also a source of agony to them, but love is that thing which all humanity yearns and reaches for and searches for in their life. And so when consciousness gets to the point where it starts to be interested again in the human soul, 
It's asking the question, what does that soul want to do? Well, it wants to return to the divinity from which it came. And so that's my take on why the universe now, as we know it, is a love story, because it's busy getting through us and probably hundreds, maybe thousands of other civilizations out there in, in the universe. It's getting to the point where we're asking, why are we here? Who are we? What's our purpose? And the answer is to become emissaries and, and uh, oh, what would be another name? Emissaries of love out into the universe so that this planet has a promise and a responsibility to develop love throughout the human species. Now, it's already going on. There are so many people saving so many different species, working their hearts and, and souls out, uh, bringing, uh, saving the life of, of mountain gorillas and dolphins and whales and, and just uh, numerous species, which gives you an indication that we are moving from, from murderous uh, adolescence into compassionate parenting. And uh, so we are becoming, as you look all around, the love story of the universe. And uh, that's a very, very encouraging thing. Of course, there's horrific murder and, and uh, you know, a warfare and so forth. And I don't deny the presence of that, but I think it is amazing that major war, like the First and Second World War, seems to be obsolete. It literally is not a politically viable uh, change mechanism. You, you can't accomplish anything these days with war except the pure destruction. And we see that on the television every night. Uh, it gets nowhere and it kills everything. So I think the chance for love to become the way we pursue the beauty of the universe and the way we understand it and the way we use it. See, tech. Uh, cosmologies are always the, the, the largest co conceptual tool we have. We always use them to make the world work for us. So imagine what would happen if we went from consciousness to love itself as the rationale for our understanding of the universe and then put that to work in our world civilization. We would certainly save ourselves. We would save our species. And that now is in question. People are saying that we're suicidal. Well, we're not. We're not. We're eternal, and we're waking up to that. We are the children of, of the divine, and we're waking up to that. So there. <laughs>